Okay, so I want to add it to add to the project tips, right? So there are three hypothesis tests that we have to run. Um, and to get set up to do this, I'll just let you know if you want to pause the video and, and go with me while I do it and practice. Um, I launched the UNG Data Hub and I just click something on the course calendar to get there. I do file new and use uh, Python 3. And then here's the key one, um, copy the group stats code from the project. <laughs> I did that, but I also, for the new mo notebook, I got the uh, initialization code from the project variable page. And I do want to mention that I am used the same import line for scipy.stats that we used on the project. Okay, so that looks like this. Um, again, this is all from the, uh, um, from the personality variables page in D2L, except the scipy.stats we want to import as stats. That's what I mean by change the uh, line here. Uh, why? Because this is exactly what's on the project. So I want to do it in the same environment that you have for the project. And then this is the group stats code. And it's pretty long here, um, but it is great. I wanted to show you how that works. Um, I got that from the project. And then I imported the personality variables data set. Okay, so that's where we're starting. That's our setup. And like I was saying, there are three different hypothesis tests that we use, and all of them require array data to go in them. And then, of course, the regression gets a little messy because the dot scatter is a method. So we use the scatter plot first and then do a regression. So um, I just wanted to go over an example of each one, like I said, using the environment, the same environment that you'll use in the project. And so let's start with a two-sample t-test. And so I want to ask the research question, is there a difference in the two groups in GPA based on biological sex? Okay, and um, without getting too deeply into it, again, this is an older data set, so the only, uh, we only have the two options, male and female. Um, there have, uh, we have grown in our understanding of sex and gender. And, uh, but this, this is an older data set, so it only has the two. Okay. Um, so let's do this. We're going to run group stats. I want you to get an example of that. And then we're going to create arrays. And then we're going to run the t-test. And this is, in fact, exactly the code that we're going to use. So let's dive right in while <laughs> the Jupyter Hub is still working. <laughs> And okay, so GPA is a numeric variable. That's important to see. I'm sorry, it's, it's uh, highlighting everything. But yes, we have a numeric variable GPA. And we have a grouping variable. What do I mean by group? It just, it's a category variable. And if there are more than two groups, we can't use a t-test. And that's why we use ANOVA. Okay, so let's use the group stats first. Sorry, group stats. And what do I do? I tell it the table name. And then I do the columns that I need. Now, the first column is the grouping variable. So I'm going to put sex. That's the category variable, the one that has the groups. And then I put GPA. Okay, boom. And it didn't like it because stats is not defined. Well, this is exciting. <laughs> Oh, I, yeah. No. Let me go up and make sure that everything is defined. So define group stats. I am spelling it right. Okay. Boom. And, and there it's working. I do not know what happened. I didn't change the way I typed this. Um, I suppose that the code up above was not initialized properly, but this is the way you do it. The table name goes in without quotes, then the category variable goes in next with quotes, and the numeric variable goes in last. And notice that it shows us that the mean for the females is just slightly higher than the mean for the males. Okay, so then the question becomes, is that a scientifically significant difference? Okay, well, how do we learn that? We're going to do stats.ttest. 
and we need to put in these arrays. So let me let me just erase that, right? Because we're going to need these arrays. So I'm going to call them uh, female is the first array I'm going to create. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do personality dot where, and the where is going to focus on the category variable. All right. So where sex is equal to F. Okay. But then I need a column. Why? Because I need an array. So I'm going to do a column, and this time I'm doing the numeric variable. So I'm doing a dot where with the grouping variable to get the right group, right? I just need the females in this particular data set. And then I'm doing a dot column to get an array of all of the GPAs for all of the females. And if you want to see that, you can print it out. You can see, oh, there's, a, there's an array with all the different GPAs. Okay, and I want to do essentially the same thing for males. And so I'm going to copy paste. And I'm going to change where sex equals F to where sex equals M. Same thing, GPA, and I will show you. We have a slightly different array now, and it's a shorter array. There are more females than males in this data set, but you can see that we have two arrays here. That's what we were going for. Okay. So now what do we do? We just do stats.ttest, and then the t-test, oh wait, sorry, the t-test that we need is the independent samples t-test. And we put female in one and male in the other. Why? Well, these are the arrays we created, and it wants arrays, and there you go. We know that the t-statistic is about 1.75 and we know that the p-value is 0 0.08 okay so this is a fail to reject the null fail to reject the null which means that um, we have no evidence for a difference in the average GPA between the groups. Okay. Um, so yeah, we do see in from the actual numbers that the females have a slightly higher GPA average, right? But scientifically, because the p-value is 0 0.08, which is greater than our standard alpha of 0 0.05, that's why we fail to reject. Okay, and that suggests that we did not find evidence for a difference um, based on biological sex. Okay, so I'm sorry, let me uh, try to do this a little better. So that was the, the t-test. Okay, and for the ANOVA, we're going to do another GPA. GPA is just a really easy variable. It's easy to type, easy to understand what it is. Um, they are self-reported GPAs, so we might question how exactly accurate they are, and that would be fair to do. Um, uh, we, did, we did check for accuracy, but we did not check all of them. We spot-checked for accuracy. Um, and so the null hypothesis for ANOVA is that all the group means are equal. But the opposite of that is not that they're all different. The opposite of them all being equal is that at least one is different. So we don't have a lot of specific information that comes out of the ANOVA. We just get very general information, which is why group stats is so, so helpful. Because we can really see what the group means are. And we can see which ones. If we do reject the null, we can see which groups are different than the others. Or, excuse me, we can see where the biggest differences lie using group stats. Okay, so then we're gonna create our three arrays for front, middle, and back. Okay, so um, sit class is a variable. Basically, they just had three options, front, middle, or back. Where do you prefer to sit in class? And the question is, does, where, does seating, seating class preference affect GPA? And, and we'll see how that goes. Again, all three of these, front, middle, back, need to be arrays, so we'll have to create those. Let's jump back in. And I'm going to need some places to work. Okay, so now we'll do our ANOVA. Sorry. And okay. 
So now we're doing the ANOVA. I may have used the wrong code there. Is it a hashtag? No, a hashtag is going to turn. Well, whatever. I'll just, I'll just throw in the hashtag. And there you guys. So this one is the ANOVA. So let's do the group stats again. So name of the table, which in this case is purse. Um, and then our category variable is going to be sit class. And then our numeric variable is going to be GPA again. Okay. And there we go. So we have a B and F and an M, right? So this is back and front and middle. And do we find a difference in group means? Well, there's some slight differences there. Okay. And, and notice that that the front is the highest, but the middle is a little bit lower than the back. So back's kind of in the middle in terms of the rankings for GPA. So let me just say that this is a rather surprising result. And um, we're probably just seeing some randomness here. Um, but it would be interesting to, uh, to follow up on this and see if there's any, again, get really accurate GPAs and, uh, and take some time to figure out um, back, middle, front, and see if there was something going on here. I'm just saying that <laughs> um, it's hard to know from, from just this if there's something really important scientifically going on here. Um, so let's just say that, we're used to, that, that we have some good students in the front, the middle, and the back. And, <laughs> um, and where do we go from here? Well, I need a, an array, right? So I'm going to do purse dot uh, where. Right, I'm going to do that, and it's basically based on the sit class. When I do the where, it's the grouping variable. So I want to do sit class equal to f. Okay, and then I want to do dot column GPA again, just like before. So I do the dot column with the um, with the grouping variable. I do the dot where with the. Oh, I'm sorry. I do the dot where with the grouping variable, and I do the dot column with the numeric variable. Okay, and then I need one for middle. <laughs> so I change the F to an M. Still want the GPA. I need to do back and change the F to a B. Okay, so no errors. So I have the three um, arrays. You can see they are just arrays of GPA like before. Um, but they're sorted into different groups based on this sit class variable here. Okay. And then how do I run the ANOVA? The code is F underscore one way. And then I just put the three arrays in front, middle, back, separated by commas. Okay. So the three arrays that we defined right here, actually, I'm going to get rid of this. Let's see. <laughs> okay, so the three arrays that I created in the code block right above, I can run the stats one way on. Oh, interesting. So I get an F statistic, and I get a P value, and I barely reject the null. Do you see that? That it is just slightly less <laughs> than my standard alpha of 0.05. So that equals alpha. So what are my results here? Okay, well, um, so since p is less than, um, I'll just type it out alpha, since p is less than alpha, or you can think of it as since p is less than 0.05, um, we reject the null. And thus we have evidence for a significant difference in group means. Okay, and then let me change that to markdown. Um, all right. And again, so we have a statistically significant difference in group means. Does that mean it's bad to sit in the middle of the class or the front of the class? or the back? No, 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 it doesn't. Um, and it's just a fun look at, again, it's just a little quirk of these 150 students that went to the University of North Georgia 10, 12 years ago. 
Okay. Um, so, you know, it's not something you need to uh, modify your behavior based upon. <laughs> okay, so let's get a couple more code blocks and get ready to do linear regression. And let's jump back in here. So linear regression. So the research question we're going to ask ourselves is, is there a correlation between self-enhancing humor and the use of coping humor? And I'm sorry, I'm going to have to kind of describe a little bit about self-enhancing humor. And if you want more details, you can go to Wikipedia. And it turned out that we use the humor styles questionnaire. So um, we, re we abbreviated it HSQ, but the humor styles questionnaire. But if you type humor styles into Wikipedia, um, an article will come out and it will go through the humor styles. And there are four primary humor styles based on the HSQ. And the self-enhancing humor is actually related to coping humor. Coping humor is what it sounds like. Coping humor is uh, sometimes referred to as gallows humor. You know, these uh, folks who are, um, if they're having a bad day, they're struggling along, they just crack jokes about it to get through. And the gallows humor reference is somebody who would be, you know, going to... <laughs> the gallows to be hung or whatever, they'd, they'd crack jokes along the way to the gallows or at the gallows. Um, now, coping humor is a little less morbid than that. Coping humor is just somebody who, when they're having a bad day, they crack jokes about it, you know, to help them cope with life. Self-enhancing humor is somebody um, who uses humor um, as a way to get through life, um, as a way to boy, buoy their spirits, you know, keep their spirits up. Um, so there should be a relationship between the coping humor scale, which we used, and the self-enhancing humor scale out of the HSQ. There should be a correlation, but the question is, is there? So we can make a scatter plot to see if some relationship or association exists. Then we're gonna need to create two arrays. Why? Okay, so the scatter plot is a table method that we've used for half the semester. Um, but to run the linear regression, we're actually going to have to have arrays. To go in for the uh, stats.lin regress, we need arrays. Okay, so we're going to start with the table and then go to the arrays. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is purse.scatter. And we want to have sick class and GPA. Wait, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm doing the one from before. That actually might be an interesting set, but this is a, uh, sorry, this is a grouping variable, so that won't work very well. Okay, so we want H H H S S E and CHS are the two columns that we're going to look at for self-enhancing humor style and for coping humor. And we've been telling you to always put the fit line equals true, why? Well, because often it is difficult to see what kind of a relationship exists in a scatter plot without the fit line. Um, this one, it was pretty clear before the fit line landed on there what, that there is a positive or upward sloping uh, line of best fit that would go in there. So again, when it's upward sloping, we're looking at a positive correlation. So there appears to be a positive correlation between these two. That's the association we're seeing, the relationship that we're seeing. So now what do I wanna do? I wanna create an array for HHS, HSSE and for CHS. Okay, so let me do that. HSSE, oops, sorry, SSE is gonna be what? It's gonna be purse.select, oh, I'm sorry, I just can do a dot column, I forgot, uh, dot column, and it's just HSSE, okay? And then the CHS is going to be purse.column CHS. It's not that hard. It turns out that these aren't split by anything, you know, male or female or freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. There aren't any groups like that. We just have two variables. We have two numeric variables. We have the numeric variable of humor styles, um, self-enhancing humor style and coping humor. So since we have two numeric variables, all we have to do is stats.linregress and then type in HHSE and CHS. 
Okay, now it spits out a lot of stuff. If you want to go to the hypothesis testing help, there are some really cool print statements right after the Lynn regress on the hypothesis testing help, and that link is in D2L on the course calendar. Um, and it takes all these uh, values and it prints them out into a nice readable array and you know exactly what you're looking at. The first two numbers they give us are the slope and intercept of this line of best fit. They give us an R value, that's the correlation. So we found a correlation between the two of 0.657, it looks like. So there's a moderate positive correlation between them. And then what's this? This is actually the um, test for the um, correlation. Is the correlation significantly different than zero? Well, yeah. Um, you know, the correlation is about uh, 0.657. And the uh, p-value for the test that's making sure that it's significantly different than zero, notice that the p-value switched to scientific notation. So since p, and p is far less than 0.05, right? So, uh, which is our standard alpha. So since p is less than alpha, we reject the null and have evidence, evidence of what? That the slope is not equal to, excuse me, the correlation. It's true, they go together, slope and correlation, but that the correlation, sorry, <laughs> and slope are not equal to zero. Right, so we say all of that, and what does it mean? It means that there is a significant correlation, right? There's that, that the association that we were seeing in the scatter plot is really there. There is a significant positive correlation between these two variables. So just to remind you of the steps, right? We start off with a table method, which can make this confusing on the, I've already answered a couple questions about this on the project. Um, Cause I start with a table method dot scatter and I see the association. Then now on your project, these are already created. We uh, have a lot of arrays in the project that we create in uh, research questions one and two. So when we get to research question five, which is the linear regression, we don't have to do a lot of, of creation of, of arrays. We've already done that. And then the stats.lin regress uses the arrays and again, spits out a lot of information. If you want a little nicer, prettier, um, more easy to read version of what spits out, then that is available in the Lin regress um, example from the hypothesis testing um, help page. And so those are the three tests that are on the project. And I hope that this will help, help you understand how to run each of them. Good luck.